The Genesis 6 narrative states that the Nephilim are on the earth in those days and also afterwards. If that's true, can we find evidence that corroborates this? I'm L.A. Marzulli. Join me as we go on the trail of the Nephilim. There is a hidden history that's been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world, and that's why we, I, am on the trail of the Nephilim. I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. Welcome to another episode of On the Trail of the Nephilim. My special guest today is Josh Peck. We will be talking about CERN, um, the ancient temple of Apollo, which allegedly is was CERN was built on. Is that true, or is that a fictional account? Is that you know someone made this stuff up? Um, what about the 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 statue of Shiva that's in um, in and around CERN? What about the idea of maybe they're trying to open up a gateway? or a portal. So we'll get into that, but first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Hey folks, investing feels overwhelming right now, doesn't it? So complicated, so many decisions, but leaving your money in the bank mm, might not be the best thing to do. It's losing value every single day. All we need to do is look at the inflation index to see uh, the reality of that. So if it's stressing you out and driving you nuts, why not invest smarter with Noble Gold Investments? Precious metals are simple and real. There was a company on the stock market that was a around 2,000 years ago. But guess what? Gold was. It's always been there through wars, disasters, and turmoil. Reliable, dependable, and authentic. That's why you can't go wrong with precious metals. They've always had your back. Noble Gold Investments America-based experts will show you how to set and forget your IRA or 401k. <clears throat> You'll get a dedicated professional assigned to you. No hassle, no call centers. This month, Noble Gold Investments is giving a free quarter ounce gold standard coin with every qualifying IRA investment. Visit noblegoldinvestments.com to claim your gold coin. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. Folks, we invested a couple of years ago, and I got to tell you, I am really glad that we did. Gold is going through the roof. Once again, that's noblegoldinvestments.com. Folks, thanks so much for joining us. Very special guest, Josh Peck. And Josh, you, you, I think, co-wrote a book, correct on that? Correct me if yeah, I'm wrong. With, uh, yep, with uh, Tom Horn. This was back in 2016. We uh, Together we wrote a book called uh, um, Abaddon Ascending. Okay. And it's all about what's going on at CERN and the stuff that we're going to be talking about today. And, and what, what, you know, I wish I could get a hold of this book because I would carry it uh, in my store. In fact, um, I will reach out to Skywatch and see if I can get a case of them, folks. So if you're interested, um, we'll have that up in our store. I will be writing them uh, today and and asking for a case of books and, you know, we'll we'll put them up in our store. But but Josh, what what's the nexus of, of this book? It's really just about explaining what happens at CERN in a way that uh, people can understand because a lot of times physicists and scientists, they have this other language, this other way of talking sure. where, you know, they, they, they sound really smart and, you know, of course they are smart, but I, you know, I, I've always believed that like, if you can't explain it to somebody in a way that like just anybody can understand, I agree. then you, you know, that just excludes people. So because of that, there have been, um, a lot of things that fly under the radar about CERN that people just don't know. Like most people don't know how, the, the Large Hadron Collider, which is the, the actual machine. CERN is just the governing body that decides what happens with the machine, you know, and other experiments and stuff. Um, but a lot of people don't know what, what, what they're actually doing, what, um, what advancements they've made, how the machine even works. And it, a lot of it's fascinating because the machine works only because uh, what we think of as particles are they're not little tiny pieces of matter like what, what we've been taught in usually in uh, high school science class. Um, they're, they're energy spikes in, in quantum fields and fields are just kind of everywhere. Like the gravitational field is kind of everywhere. It's just some places it's stronger, some places it's weaker. Well, all fields are like that. And um, so the only, the only 
way that the LHC can work is if that definition of reality is true. Because otherwise, it's not that they're smashing two particles together and then they're just seeing like what flies out of those particles. What happens is when that explosion happens, when that when when contact is made, it sends energy into other quantum fields, possibly ones that we haven't discovered yet. Wow. And uh, and that those energy spikes are particles. So they 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 they're trying to measure and see if they can discover any new particles that they haven't discovered yet. And you know, probably the most famous one in recent memory was in 2012. They uh, discovered the Higgs boson, right. which which the, which that was God fascinating particle. too. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So that was fascinating too because that that showed us that mass isn't just like substance. It isn't just like um, like how much substance a thing has. That's not mass. Mass is an interaction with the Higgs field. So that's how uh, something like a photon, a particle of light, can be massless yet still exist. All it means is it does not interact with the Higgs field at all. That's also why um, Einstein said that if you travel, that you can't ever get to the speed, speed of, of light. light because your mass will increase. Well, the reason that your mass increases um, is because you're interacting more with the Higgs field. So it, it's fascinating to think about that, just the way that reality is put together. So that that's some of the fascinating stuff and, and the stuff that's kind of cool. But then there's some darker stuff like you brought up in the intro um, about uh, you know the, the, the Shiva statue. One, one thing that um, uh, I want to answer right right away. The, the question that you asked is uh, uh, if it was built on a Roman ancient Roman city. It was. Uh, that's absolutely true. They actually had to stop construction um, of the L LHC because they brought up these ruins, and it was this ancient Roman city called the Polyacum. And of course, they venerated Apollo there, and they actually believed that's where the bottomless pit was. <laughs> So when you think about like the location that they chose uh, for this big large hadron collider, it's on the border of two uh, two different countries, and it's like why would they do that? Yeah. Unless was there something? Was there a darker purpose uh, behind that location where it was once believed that that's where the bottomless pit was located? Let me, and let me, know, now look what they're doing. Let, let me jump in here and 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 yeah. because I'm going to play devil's advocate. I hate mm -hmm. I hate that line. I'm going to play angel advocate here. <laughs> um, yeah, let's let's switch that around. Um, is it possible? I mean, when you when you make a statement like that, immediately that's conspiracy theory, and I get that. So anything that goes against the official narrative and the fact checkers is conspiracy theory. But you you raise a valid point. Why did they choose that particular area, where it's between two countries? It's France and Switzerland, if I'm not mistaken, right? Or yeah. Okay, I think so. And, and I've yeah. been there. I mean, I've, I've I lectured at t I, Tim Alberino and I talked right where the statue of Shiva is. And then, of course, we're hopping around here. But then, of course, the, the ceremony with the guy in the goat skin and all that stuff. Yeah. we'll get into that in a little bit. But why would they do something like that? I mean, surely they could have just put the whole thing in France and be done with it. Is why do you think they chose that spot? Do you think it's deliberate? And if you, if it is deliberate, Angel Advocate here. Um, what proof can you offer that it was deliberate that they chose that spot because of those ancient ruins? Yeah, unfortunately, they haven't. As far as I can tell, they haven't come out with like a, a specific reason why that area. Because I guess even the area, it was really inconvenient for them to to build it there. They could have they could have picked a million different areas and it would have been fine. Uh, you know, as as far as proof, you know, I, I asked the question: Was there a darker purpose? Did they somehow know that in that area? Uh, there was this ancient city that, they, that that there was this ancient belief that the bottomless pit was there. You know, I can't offer proof, but I mean, it's a pretty big coincidence, if not, that they just happened to pick this really strange, inconvenient area, and then they found the ancient Roman city of Apollyacum, where they venerated Apollo and the bottomless pit and all this stuff. So, uh, it, it, you know, somebody could say that it's just conspiracy. Maybe it's just coincidence, but I don't know. That's, that's a, it's a pretty big pretty big coincidence. And then especially when you see all of the dark imagery that they constantly use, like the Shiva statue, there was a a, um, a parody ritual of, a, of a, like a ritualistic killing, a sacrifice a few years ago. That, let, let, um, let, yeah, let me, let's delve into that. I mean, yeah. I, I went online and I mean, I looked at some of the stuff and ha ha, you know, we were kind of making a joke. Really? I mean, seriously, you're going to make a joke like that? I mean, that's not a joke. That's that's something, in my opinion, that is absolutely nuanced and deliberate. Your thoughts? Yes, 
Absolutely, hundred percent. Because nobody got fired for that. I mean, that that gave that gave CERN a really bad name for a while. You I know, know it, it did. Bad. And then everyone just running, forgot about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If I was running a, a government agency or a company or something, and somebody did something like that on my property, I mean, I would absolutely fire them. I mean, th that that's what you do. But nobody got in trouble. No, no. As far as we know, uh, no names got released or anything. I don't believe it was a real, you know, sacrifice. I think it was. I don't either. It was a yeah. mock sacrifice. Yeah, exactly. And uh, but even in, in magic rituals and stuff, uh, and we write, we wrote about that in the book. They they will use parody a, as a way to get some things done. So just because it was a parody doesn't mean it was a joke. They might have actually been trying to do something there uh, with dark magic. Um, and then you know, of course, there's the Shiva statue, which is the destroyer in in, uh, right. in Indian uh, epics and stuff. Yeah, and Hindu, right? Sh Shiva is is, is uh, like the destroyer and the creator of the universe. And so that's it's kind of fitting with some of the things that they're they're doing in CERN with some of their experiments because there have been questions. Well, could this create a black hole? You know, uh, how would you stop it if it did? And you know that that kind of stuff. And then th just the way they talk about things, their uh, their science director Sergio Bertolucci. Um, now it, it has not been a secret. It's on CERN's website that one of the top things that they want to do with uh, the LHC is to probe into higher dimensions and map them out. Uh, and Sergio Bertolucci, I uh, have the quote in the book, he said something along the lines of, uh, we don't know what's gonna come through. Some unknown unknowns might might come through and, and basically visit us and stuff. And I immediately think Revelation 9, I don't know about you. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, can you, I mean, is that is, is that on the website? Is it on that actual quote on the CERN website? Where, where did you the, get that from? The uh, I don't I don't know if the quote is still on the website. Back in 2016, it was, okay. and uh, so we we put it in the book. It, it, uh, people can Google it and find it though. It's it's out there. But what is on the website? I believe it, it still is, unless they changed it after the past couple of years. But uh, I don't believe they have because um, the, the the plans for using the LHC to, to probe into higher dimensions that that I believe is still up there. Actually, a report just came out a couple of days ago um, that I read on my YouTube channel that they actually have evidence now of a fourth spatial dimension because sometimes when they do these collisions sometimes particles disappear they're, they're just <laughs> gone and there's been a lot of uh theories as to what that is but one of the highest theories and i guess if i'm understanding the article right they did test this and they did in a sense prove that this was the case the theory that these particles are escaping into higher dimensions into into a fourth or fifth spatial dimension um and apparently just now just just within the past week or two they they have more evidence uh, leading to that conclusion that that they are actually breaching higher dimensions now, and that that reminds me of you know the Tower of Babel, <laughs> you know that reminds me of stuff like that, Revelation nine, the bottomless pit. I mean, all of, all of this stuff is connected, and if if CERN doesn't play some kind of role in the end times, I would be really surprised. Well, let, let me ask you this: you know, you talked about this ancient city um, that was dedicated to Apollo; they worshipped Apollo. And this is where the bottomless pit was located. Has that was are there pictures of that? Was it was it uncovered? I mean, how do we know that the bottomless pit existed there? Well, I think they thought of it as more of a spiritual place. There's okay. a, a lot of pictures of the ruins and stuff that they dug up because they actually had to stop construction to let the archaeologists come in and, and dig up the city. Um, but uh, as far as the belief that that's where it was located, it was more of a spiritual thing. So it wasn't like, um, you know, in, in places in South uh, America, yeah, there will be like a cave and they'll, they'll say that that's the path to the dead or whatever. Right. Um, I, I think it was just more of a like a okay. spiritual belief that well, just and, that location was was the, the, the portal to the. And population. just like in Israel with the cave of Pan, I mean, that was, yeah. you know, it, it doesn't go into the underworld, but there may, maybe there's a gateway. Like, you know, and, and I was at Amuramora uh, down in the border of Bolivia and Peru. And shamans are there constantly, offerings, and there's like a gateway. We've got pictures of it. And Brian Forrest and I are standing on either side of the gateway, uh, allegedly. But we also have people that have seen the gate open and light beams come out of it. So, you know, it's like if you have an anti-supernatural worldview, then everything that we're saying, it's just, you know, you just flush that right down the uh, you know the circular commode as it were, and 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 this is why when the fact checkers you know come up and say something like this, they immediately discount everything because they have a non supernatural worldview, which is really unfortunate. And most of the scientific community, not all of it, 
have that same mindset, that same paradigm. It's a non-supernatural world. And yet we're hearing from the scientists at CERN that there's a higher dimension, which we don't know about. And that, in our opinion, in, in your worldview, in my worldview, that ties right into the biblical prophetic narrative. And you quoted Revelation 9, your thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. Because one of their other plans too, um, and they've been talking about this for years too, is uh, to create this kind of communication device. If they were to probe higher dimensions and if they got some sense that there was some intelligence there, they have a way of altering the spin of a line of particles to create like, like a binary code. And they want to send that through and then have the detectors on and see if anything comes back. I mean, that's that's just inviting in whatever, you know, whatever exists in that realm. And I, based on Revelation 9, I think we do know what, what exists in, in realms like that. And it's, it's just, to me, it just seems like another form of witchcraft. It's just hiding under technology. You, you know, it's, it's, commu it's, it's communicating with spirits. We're not supposed to be doing that. Uh, there's a lot of restrictions in the Bible on that for good reason, because they're they're destructive and they 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 don't like us very much. Um, but it's just using technology to to do the same kind of witchcraft stuff, the same kind of sorcery, the the, the same kind of stuff that they were probably doing uh, at the Tower of Babel and you know other other times like that. But yeah, Revelation nine I think is really interesting because the. It, it, it's a big coincidence that CERN's built over a place where it was believed the bottomless pit existed. And I'm not saying that it does or it doesn't. I don't know where it is. But uh, but there is a bottomless pit. There is some kind of opening to it because we read about that in Revelation 9. And right. when that is opened, all these locust creatures, these, these uh, fallen angel type beings, whatever they are, come pouring out of it. Well, what if, what if the, the thing that uh, initiates that whole process is us messing with these higher dimensions and what if god's like okay hey you want these false gods you got them let's let's see how they're going to treat you just like with the uh, whole tower of babylon right. so i i do think all of this stuff is connected so i just want to really drill in here and make it really clear that we're not stating this is where the bottomless pit is and that cern is engaged in some sort of nefarious activity we don't know what we are saying is we find we're, we're kind of taken aback by the fact that Shiva is, is at CERN, the destroyer. And I was there and I, I saw it and I asked the docent and he really had no answer, number one. Number two, um, we're not saying that this is the bottomless pit in Revelation 9, but it is interesting that this ancient city, which was dedicated to Apollo, was also the place of the bottomless pit, number two. Number three, we're, we're not saying that CERN's going to open up a gateway or a portal, but if they're messing with another dimension, is it possible that that's what will happen? We just don't know. So, you know, we're looking at all this and, and scratching our heads. And number four, why would you dedicate um, and have a ceremony with a mock occult ritual. Why would you do that unless you know, you're sending out a signal? Josh, I'll give you the last word. Thanks so much for coming on the record. Um, great interview. Really appreciate it. Tell folks about your podcast and, uh, and I'll give you the last word. Thank you, sir. Well, the best place to uh, get some of my content is um, YouTube and dailyrenegade.com. So on YouTube, it's youtube.com slash at dailyrenegade. And I did just recently do a video about CERN uh, firing up their Large Hadron Collider on April 8th, which I don't think is a coincidence. There's something going on there. And also NASA's firing three rockets uh, into the into the eclipse shadow uh, too. So I, I did a, a video on that. But because we get censored so much, I, I created dailyrenegade.com and that, that's the best place to go and get anything uh, that, that I do or that I'm involved with. Uh, I have full interviews with you on there uh, for your audience. They would really like that. But it's a, it's a membership thing. And the reason that I had to set that up was because YouTube kept deleting my channels and deleting all my videos. And you, you just can't rely on YouTube to, to play fair. Um, so uh, it's, it's dailyrenegade.com. And uh, I, would, I would love it if people want to go get a membership there. They'll, they'll find lots of, lots of stuff that they like. And on my channel, when I do interviews, I, only, I, I can only really post about half the interview just because of the censorship issues. But the whole videos are available at dailyrenegade.com. So that's where people can uh, go if they want to find out more about me. Josh, thanks so much for coming on the record. We will be carrying that book. What is the title of that book so people can know? 
Absolutely. It's uh, Abaddon Ascending, and it's written by me and uh, Tom Horn. Okay. Abaddon Ascending, folks, we will be carrying it in the bookstore if you want to do a deep dive on that. Please consider uh, going to our site, elliamarzoli.net. I will be at Guthrie at the Guthrie Conference this Friday night with Mondo Gonzalez and uh, Lee Brainerd and Pete Garcia. And yours truly, I'll be speaking Friday and Saturday. So I hope to see you there. You get tickets, go to elliamarzoli.net. Look under speaking, scroll down. You'll see the conference banner. You got to click that open, scroll down, get your ticket now. Hope to see you there. Josh, thanks so much for coming on the record. Really Anytime. appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, my pleasure. Hey, folks, I have a special announcement. We just opened up a new website. It's called roswellrevisited.com, roswellrevisited.com. I want to thank Chauncey Green for getting that set up for it. Please go there and check it out. We've got a deal for you. We really do. Both of these incredible DVDs. This is real investigative journalism, roswellrevisited.com. Go check it out now. And we've got a special deal for both of these two DVDs. And I think you'll find it interesting. By the way, when you guys buy the DVDs from us or watch on, on our streaming station, you help keep the lights on here and keep us moving the ball further down the court. UFOs are real, burgeoning and not going away. RoswellRevisited.com, RoswellRevisited.com. And before I go, I want to give a shout out to Gil Zimmerman because Gil and I worked on this film and I think it's the best two films we've ever created in, in our entire uh, time together and, and in the entire UFO film series. Nine and Ten will be coming out very shortly. More about that soon. Meantime, RoswellRevisited.com. Thanks so much.